Welcome to Tribune Talk with Thomas Edwards, Special Candidates Edition. Here we are today at beautiful Lakeside Pavilion in Marble Falls. We're going to take a look at the Marble Falls City Council. We're putting the hard questions to the candidates. Join us. Today, we have the pleasure of interviewing candidates for the Marble Falls City Council. With me on the panel are incumbent Councilman David Rhodes, incumbent Councilwoman Sharon Pitter, candidates Jay Marie Hurst, and candidate Ryan Nash. Thank you all for being here today. Glad to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our first question for the candidates. What steps will it take to close the city's economic gap? Mr. Nash? Thomas, that's a, that's a tough question that we're going to have to take a a hard look at after coming out of the last budget session and, and running a deficit um, and already making deep cuts in personnel cost and other uh, maintenance and operation cost across the city budget. We're going to have to look for any additional soft spots in the budget and try to trim out uh, anywhere we can um, in the short term to just to, to stay afloat. In the long term, the only way we're going to close that economic gap is to grow sales tax base and property tax base. Um, and, and we're going to be waiting on the economic recovery to do that. Thank you, Mr. Nash. Ms. Hurst, same question. Thank you. Um, although I agree with Mr. Nash that we need to continue to uh, be a bit more mindful of the uh, cuts, we've done some good cuts in the city staff and spending. We need to be mindful of that and continue um, our efficiencies in that regard. Um, as we approach our kickoff for the budget planning calendar, we need to focus on the successes as well as the health and safety of our community uh, economically as well as otherwise. Uh, we need to be mindful of these decisions as we go forward and what these decisions may mean in our one, five, and ten years out from now. We can't just put an immediate band-aid on there, but we need to be mindful of what these cuts could mean in the long term. Thank you. Mr. Rhodes. Thank you. I, I think it's important to note as well, um, I, I take a, a little bit of exception. Ryan said that a deficit, the city's not a deficit. The uh, city is running in a balanced budget, um, albeit uh, the tax rates is it, it, not what a lot of us would like. I think it's important to note two things that got, got us into this hole other than uh, the large tax increase of, of several councils back, and that is, one, it's, we tend to forget that the large flood that we had some time back took a huge hit on the city's reserves. And we spent a lot of money uh, to rebuild the city at that rate. Secondly, uh, last year, and the reason there was a tax increase on top of that is a large portion of our tax uh, uh, payers voted themselves um, an exemption. It cost the city $155,000 out of the budget. So it, it's going to be important to note that we have to get those reserves back because we don't have them. Um, but other than that, the, uh, the economy needs to move, as, as Ryan and others have stated. Thank you, Mr. Rose. And same question, Ms. Bitter. Okay, I would like to agree with the other candidates, but I want to add that over 70% of the city's revenue comes from sales tax. And so when, a bus when the businesses do well, the city does well. So the answer to that question would be to encourage businesses and business growth um, and, of course, to reduce the spending. Good. Thank you very much. The reason why we're taking these questions in this order is we're basing this on the candidates' uh, order on the ballot. Our next question is, what special projects do you support to help boost tourism? And again, the first question goes to Mr. Nash. Thomas, I'm, I would be supportive of projects that enhance our single largest asset, the lakes, and take advantage of the opportunities we have to to promote that and uh, attract people to use our lakes more and make them more user friendly, um, to bring tourists here, have them spend their dollars here, potentially make a long term commitment to our city either uh, by moving here or opening a business here. Um, other projects that, it, that I would be in support of and, and looking, would like to look further into or it would be a sports complex, um, a river walk, a boardwalk. Um, 
thank you very much for your response. Again, same question to Ms. Hurst. Thank you. Um, I think it's real obvious what our assets are here in the community, and we need to build upon, continue to maintain and build upon those, being the lake, the creeks, the hike and bike trails. We've got a good plan right now on continuing that maintenance, which, uh, quite frankly, was in, uh, underscored the importance of that from the flood we had in 2007. It uh, uh, encouraged us to plan better and to be better stewards on taking care of these assets that we have. Continuing the Main Street connection down to the lake, I think, is very important. Main Street's a good asset uh, to be utilized for our tourism. And um, I think everybody's on board with uh, some type of sports complex here as well. But I think uh, we need to be uh, very mindful of the assets that we have here historically as well as natural. So we want to build on those. Well, thank you, Ms. Hurst. And Mr. Rose, the same question to you, sir. It's a great question. And I think that the context of that question really needs to be we need to decide, to decide as a city that that's what we want to do and that's who we want to be. Um, I've, I've been involved in, in city council and the government for, uh, for some time on and off. And it was decided over 10 years ago, or at least noted, that tourism was and should be our greatest asset as a destination. Um, although the decisions that have been made since that period of time really have been more shotgun in their approach. Hence, we've not accomplished a task that I think we should have accomplished some time ago. Um, absolutely, our, the lake is one of our largest assets. Um, I'd like to note also that um, I began the sports pl uh, complex project over 12 years ago. Uh, I'd certainly like to see that come to fruition. I think it would be very tough given our earlier question in, in the economic uh, uh, climate that we're in, but it's very doable. And the numbers and statistics say that it will absolutely bring uh, a lot of folks here um, as a destination and boost everything that we've got as an asset. Right. Thank you, Mr. Rose, for that answer. And Ms. Pitter, same question for you, please. Okay, I, I agree with uh, this lake being our one of our best assets and the beauty of this community and the surrounding area. Um, I think at this time we need to be very mindful of cost, effective uh, tourism, and I think with the the economic time that we're faced with right now, I think the sports complex may have to wait until we're a little bit better um, situated financially. Um, okay. okay. Thank you very much for your response. And now <coughs> we'd like to ask our candidates the third question. How can the council, the Marble Falls Lake LBJ Chamber of Commerce, and the Marble Falls Economic Development Corporation work together more efficiently? Mr. Nash, the question goes to you first, sir. Tom, to, 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 for those three groups to work together more efficiently, we need more communication, regular communication and participation between uh, the staffs of, of all three organizations and, and the board members and council members of those organizations um, to m communicate regularly and, and to commit to, to building a team atmosphere and environment for us to, to work together in and have some common mm -hmm. goals uh, that we can all stride, make strides for. Um, there's a lot of great opportunity if, if, if we get some synergy going between those groups and just continuously make efforts to communicate well and, and work together. Thank you very much for your response. Ms. Harris, the same question to you, please. I believe it's all about leadership in planning. Uh, right now we need to uh, have the right leadership in each of those entities and have the right planning. While some of the goals in each of them overlap or common, we need to not be redundant with each of the entities but in working together. I think it is important uh, that there is a better communication. I would even like to think that maybe uh, entertaining maybe a quarterly workshop amongst all the entities might be helpful in that goal. But uh, getting back to the leadership part of that, EDC really needs to uh, get someone qualified in that position to help get their management and direction going as soon as they finish preparing their str business strategic plan that the bylaws call for. But overall, with all the entities, we just need to um, recognize the goals and the common things that we can work together in the communication. Good. Thank you very much. And Mr. Rose, your response, sir. Thomas, all those things are accurate. Leadership, communication, but it still comes down to a plan. And, and if, if I could be so bold, a mandate. The city council um, 
it, it, uh, it elects, if you will, uh, and puts in place the board members for the EDC and, and should also put down a strategy. And uh, that has not been done. Uh, they've been operated as two separate entities, hence there, there is no, there hasn't been commonality. We've had workshops. Um, it just hadn't happened, and it needs to happen. I agree with the leadership side on, on both sides, in the, in the, from the council uh, and towards the EDC, but there needs to be a lot more direction given from the council in, in, in direction, in, in, if nothing else, just that we are going to work together. We are going to find common goals, and we are going to strive to meet those goals, and we're going to put it in a short-term and long-term strategic plan. Thank you very much. And Ms. Pitter, your response, please. Okay. Again, I agree <laughs> with uh, the other candidates on this. Um, I also want to add that uh, council is the entity that appoints the EDC members, and I think that's very important on the appointments. Um, having people that this um, council and chamber can work with and uh, we started, uh, the three of these entities have started workshops and we're progressively getting better at our communication. Thank you very much. And now it's time for our fourth and final question, the wild card question. This is a question that the candidates were not prepped for. It arose from discussions with readers and viewers and from inside our own staff. We are looking for an extemporaneous and completely off the cuff response. And again, we'll start with candidate Ryan Nash. Mr. Nash, is the extended time for alcohol sales downtown a business boon or a business bust? Tom, that, that, that's a business boon. I would support that. Uh, if those business owners on the down, in downtown feel like they need an extra couple of hours to, to, for alcohol sales, I would, uh, I would support that. I don't know how, what their numbers say, if that has really helped them much or how much it will help them, but if they feel like they need that advantage or that boost to their business, then um, I would support it. Thank you very much. And Ms. Hurst, same question for you. Um, I feel the same. I, I'm, um, I am for that, especially on the Main Street District. I think it's appropriate there. I don't have any problems with that. We have a number of other um, restrictions and uh, items that we can work from there. It, I do not believe that it's um, I think the biggest scare that people had is that it's going to be available throughout the city, and that is not the case. We've planned efficiently for that in our planning and zoning, and uh, I think the Main Street District is appropriate for that. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Rose? I think it's both, and, 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 it, and, it, and additionally, it's one other thing. That one other thing is too soon to tell, and um, I would have to be one to say I, I voted for, against it and um, still would not, quote, support it. Economically, so far, and again, it's too soon to tell, it's a bust. Um, at least it hasn't lived up to its billing, but, but it's, it's too early. Um, but if it's a boon, and I think it is, quite frankly, to, as an attraction and a draw for, for funds that are, are difficult to, to track, so be it. Um, I'm okay with it. The council, this, this current council, worked really hard on that question, hence it's somewhat contained, if you will. I hate using that word, but um, um, as, as as Councilman uh, Hurst or Council uh, Candidate Hurst pointed out, it, it, it's not throughout the whole city, so it's too soon to tell. Thank you. And Ms. Pitter, same question for you, please. Yes. Uh, the late night hours is uh, a sale of alcohol is contagious to the Main Street District. And I do support that. Um, as I said before, an increase in business is good for the city and the businesses, um, though I I see if there is ever a problem um, with that, then uh, we can change. Good. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Well, I'd like to thank our candidates for being with us here today on Tribune Talk with Thomas Edwards, Candidate Special Edition. Today, of course, we're featuring the Marble Falls City Council. I'd like to thank incumbent Councilman David Rhodes, incumbent Councilwoman Sharon Pitter, candidates Mr. Ryan Nash and Ms. Jane Marie Hurst, also, incumbent councilman David Eyes is also running. He could not make it here today. Remember to vote May 14th, and thank you very much for watching. This is Thomas Edwards.